This is Valley News Live at noon. Breaking news just into the newsroom. We began with break, excuse me, charges have been filed against Otter Tail County Sheriff's Office Deputy Kelly Douglas Backman for one count of misconduct by a public officer and one count of fourth degree DWI involving a high speed chase through Fergus Falls in October of 2020. Stay with Valley News Live. We will have more on this story. Now, Fargo police are continuing to investigate a triple shooting over the weekend that broke out at a downtown bar. Police were responded to the Bismarck just after midnight Sunday after hearing what sounded like gunshots. Police say they found three victims who were immediately transported to local hospitals. Now, Valley News team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley <coughs> joins us live now from where it all happened with more on what unfolded. Bailey. Brian, there's still a lot that we don't know at this time, but we have heard from a lot of you on social media, including several witnesses who say this all started after a fight broke out Sunday or Saturday night into Sunday morning. Witnesses say that uh, it all happened because a bartender cut a customer off from drinking. Witnesses say that a verbal and then physical altercation ensued before what they describe as what seemed like dozens of gunshots rang out. Now, Brian, of course, Fargo police have not been able to confirm these details with us yet, but Fargo police do say that since June of 2020, that's just about six or seven months from right now, they've responded here to the Bismarck 606 times. The top three types of calls they've responded to are disturbances, uh, dealing with impaired people, as well as assaults. Fargo police do expect to release more information on this incident later this afternoon. Hopefully we'll learn more about any suspects in this case, as well as the conditions of those three victims. We'll continue to keep you updated. For now, live in downtown Fargo, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. Thanks, Bailey. Grand Forks Police K-9 Shelby is getting some extra treats and belly rubs after tracking down a shoplifter. Officers responded to a shoplifting call at Shields just after 8 Saturday night. Police tracked down the shoplifter's car and discovered that they took off on foot. One suspect was apprehended immediately, while the other fled to the parking lot of a nearby apartment complex. Officers set up a perimeter and deployed K-9 Shelby to track down the remaining suspect. Shelby found the sus second suspect hiding behind a vehicle about two blocks away. Well, the weather didn't feel half bad this morning, but is it pleasant here to stay at least for a little while? Well, let's check in with forecaster Summer Snowball. She'll tell us all about it. Hey, Summer. Hey, Brian, and even though it's a fairly cloudy and gray afternoon, those temperatures are beautiful if you are stepping outside for your lunch break. Currently 37 beautiful degrees in Fargo with an overcast sky. 42, one of the warm spots up in Grand Forks at this hour. 35 in Thief River Falls, 40 in Bemidji, 35 in Devils Lake, and 39 in Detroit Lakes. However, it is breezy and the wind is continuing to pick up, already gusting into the 30s in areas like Langdon, Grand Forks, Works, Jamestown and in Oaks, but even stronger wind is off in western North Dakota, gusting to 58 miles per hour in Dickinson. There was a gust earlier this morning of 59 miles per hour in Bismarck, currently gusting around 40. So it is a breezy afternoon. And on top of all of that, we do even have a few raindrops on satellite and radar this afternoon. Not all of this is reaching the ground. Most of it is evaporating by the time it does make it but you might be hit with a few sprinkles from time to time. Tomorrow is a first alert weather day with a chance for some snow. Brian, I'll break down the details that hour by hour planner and how much we might expect for snowfall coming up in just a few minutes. Well, definitely stay tuned with you so we can find out more. Thanks, Summer. Well, one person is recovering following a rollover crash in Batrami County. Officials say it happened at 743 this morning on Highway 2 near Wilton when the driver lost control due to the icy roads and rolled into a ditch, coming to the rest on its roof. Now, the 66-year-old driver suffered no injuries, and the 89-year-old passenger was taken to Sanford Bemenji Hospital for non-life-threatening injuries. Well, investigators are trying to pinpoint the cause of a house fire that killed a person in Douglas County. The call came in just before 6 yesterday morning about flames and smoke pouring from a home in the city of Matana. Now, fire crews pulled the victim from the burning building, but resuscitation efforts were not successful. Talks surrounding the nomination of Justice Murray Garland to become Attorney General took place today. Judge Garland was picked for the position by the president back in January. He was served as a circuit judge on the U.S. Court of Appeals for D.C. since 1997. 
President Obama previously picked him to replace late Justice and Tony Scalia, Scalia excuse me, in 2016, but the Senate at the time refused to hold a hearing or nomination. Minnesota U.S. Senator Tim Tina Smith is calling for federal investigations into possible price gouging of natural gas in the Midwest and other regions. Following severe winter weather that plunged Texas and other states into a deep freeze. Millions of homes and businesses were without power for days. Smith says natural gas spot prices spiked as high as 100 times typical levels, forcing utilities and other natural gas users to incur excessive costs, many of which were passed on to customers. In a letter sent to a federal regulators, Smith says price spikes could threaten the financial stability of some utilities that lack significant cash reserves. Minnesota Governor Tim Walls has a jobs plan, and we're going to hear about it later today. He's visiting the University of Minnesota this afternoon to announce his 2021 capital investment recommendations for this year's legislative session. Senator Amy Klobuchar says misinformation about the virus and vaccine will only make things worse. She joined a doctor from Alina Health to address that World Health Organization has called an infodemic. Right now, a lot of people still can't get the vaccine, but there's people who do qualify for it now who are deciding not to get it. And so it not only is bad for all of us when that happens, but it also uh, makes it less efficient because then maybe they'll decide a few months later they want it. Um, and it's just not the right way to do this. Last month, Senator Klobuchar sent letters to social media companies urging them to take more action on stopping the spread of misinformation on their platforms. Changing behaviors may have played a greater impact on reducing COVID-19 spread than closing schools last spring. The UCLA researchers tracked the movement of people between March 8th and May 18th by using cell phone or internet data. They found a modest reduction in the cases of COVID-19 in deaths when schools were closed during that time. But the reduction was three times greater when there were voluntary changes in people's behavior that included eating less at restaurants and spending more time at home. And raise a glass because it's National Margarita Day. Chili's is offering a few delicious deals today. The restaurant chain has $3 house margaritas and $7 premium margaritas. On the border has a $5 margarita through February 28th. And Jose Cuevo is giving consumers a chance to win eight bucks. All you have to do is follow the brand on social media and thank Todd Kakala, who found National Margarita Day. Thank you, Todd. And the first 200 participants will receive $8 via PayPal. That's the average cost of a margarita. A, <clears throat> excuse me, a NDSU fraternity is outside of the loafing jug for the next five days to raise money for a good cause. Alpha Raw, or Thaw, that is, Omega is standing out in the cold for 120 hours to raise money for the Fargo Moorhead charity Down Home. This charity furnishes homes for those that just emerging from poverty. The goal this year, $15,000. One member says he wants to help out his new community in any way that he can. I'm not from Fargo originally, but now that I've got here, I just, I want to help the community in any way I can. It's just such a great place to be. These students will be outside the loafing jug collecting these funds until 1159 at night on Friday. Well, coming up at noon, we find out more about a new social media app that is everybody talking. And after a few sprinkles today, there's a chance for snow tomorrow. Weather up next with forecaster Summer Snowbox.